Hey everybody. Well, we've been through four different ways to characterize how much solute is dissolved in a solution. Uh, we've been through molarity, we've been through molality, percent by mass, percent by volume. Now we got one more to go, and that's called the mole fraction. So the fifth way that we're going to describe how much solute there is in a solution is by way of the mole fraction. It is a way to quantitatively characterize how much solute is dissolved in a solution. Technically, it has a uh, definition as well. Um, kind of goes with the math that you find in mole fraction. The ratio of the number of moles of solute in solution to the total number of moles of solute and solvent. All right, so we have tons of solution terminology in there. Um, let's take a look at what the actual formula is so we can make sense of all that. All right, so we have um, this symbol X uh, that you can see right here. And X is going to represent the mole fraction of subscript A. So let me get my um, pen off of there for a second. You can also see that we have a subscript A right here. And what that means is that with this particular equation, we're going to be dealing with a mole fraction of the solvent. Okay, so in other words, this A is going to go with a solvent. All right. We also have the other mole fraction of the solute, which is X with a subscript B. Okay, And here we can also see that in these two formulas, there's tons of N's. Now, what are N's? Well, N, if you remember from the ideal gas law, is nothing more than number of moles. So in the case of... Uh, anywhere you see n here, we're going to use moles for those, to represent those particular variables. And you also see each one comes with a subscript A or B. What we just said over here, wherever you see A, that's going to represent your solvent. And Bs are always going to represent your solutes. So that is how you keep things straight, how you stay organized while you're doing a mole fraction type of problem. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at a typical sample that you'll see when asked to do mole fraction. Okay, um, so here would be the problem. Calculate the mole fraction of 20 grams of CaCl2 in 700 grams. Okay, so where do we start? Well, the first place we're going to start is utilizing our given grams of solute, our 20.0 grams of Ca. Cl2. And since this is a mole fraction, that's just not good enough. We got to go from moles to, uh, sorry, from grams to moles in order to do this problem properly. So what we'll need then is we'll have to go to our periodic table to look up how much CaCl2 actually weighs, the molar mass of it. So if you need more practice here, go ahead and hit pause, go look up how much CaCl2 weighs and enter it in the line below. Okay, what I'll do um, for, for you is I'll just go ahead and put the mole fraction um, that I have. It's 110.97. And again, that would be from the periodic table. You'd add up you know, the 40.08 from the calcium, the 35.45 from the chlorine, but do it twice and add it all together. You get the 110.97. That is the amount in one mole of CaCl2. Okay. So then we'd go ahead and we'd cross off like units as we did when we studied the mole. We'd do the math out and we'd get 0 0.180 mole of CaCl2. We also have the other chemical that we have to deal with. This is our solvent. So we have 700 grams of water. And we have to do the same type thing down here. We're going to have grams of water being converted to moles of water. And to do that, we need molar mass. It's 18.02 grams for water. That's the amount in one mole. And we crank out the math for this one, and it gives us something like 38.84 moles of water. OK, now if there are uh, when they give us calculate the mole fraction of 20 grams, they're really focusing in on that solute part. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula that dealt with the solute part. So in the case of um, our formula, it was 
x sub b equals n sub b over n sub a plus n sub b, look like that, okay? So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna transfer these particular numbers, these values into this formula. So b, we said, dealt with solute. Okay, you can go back a couple slides and see that. Okay, so what we have on our top line then is we have 0.180 moles. And underneath that, we have um, n sub a plus n sub b. So we have the 38.84 moles plus, just like before, 180 moles. N sub b stays the same. We just add the two together and then we divide. And when we do that, we wind up getting 0 0.0461, sorry, that's two zeros, four, six, one. So this is the mole fraction of CaCl2, 20 grams in 700 grams of water. Okay, now it's a real small number, but think about it, 20 grams in 700 grams of water. There's a pretty di big difference in amount of each chemical there, and that's why this number here is so small. So the mole fraction from the water portion, if we calculated that out, would be much greater. But in this case, this particular problem, we're focusing in on the solute and not the solvent. Okay, so I hope this uh, allowed you to understand the mole fraction concept a little bit better. Get familiarized with the subscripts A and B and what they represent. Make sure you're clear on the word solute and solvent and you know the difference so you know which of the formulas to use. And other than that, we just use our knowledge from the mole chapter to help us with this problem. The mathematics aren't that bad. So keep practicing, um, do your best, and I'll see you next time.